vapor pressure. And this is part of the phase transitions lectures, part two. Okay, now vapor pressure can be one of those concepts that is a little bit hard to understand. Now we're going to start by saying that all liquids, and most solids actually, continuously vaporize. And so that means that they continuously have molecules enter the gas phase. Now think about what happens to a glass of water if you leave it out for several days on a countertop. So it's going to evaporate. And that is vaporization. Okay, so the vapor pressure of a substance is defined as this pressure that's created over a liquid by molecules having enough kinetic energy to escape that liquid. So when molecules have enough kinetic energy to escape the liquid, they'll enter the gas phase. Now thermodynamically, we say that it's the partial pressure of a gas at equilibrium. And we'll be talking about equilibrium in a couple of weeks. But right now, we're going to explain this concept of vapor pressure, and then you'll understand what at equilibrium means more fully later on. Okay, so equilibrium vapor pressure. Now what I have here is a closed container, okay? And so I have a liquid, so I have a liquid phase, and I'm showing that molecules are entering the gas phase, so they're evaporating, and then they're condensing back into the liquid phase. Now, these two processes are happening at the same rate. So for every molecule that evaporates, another one condenses, okay? So same rate. Now, at equilibrium, the number of molecules in this gas phase doesn't change in time. Now, that doesn't mean they have to be the same molecule. It just means that the number, overall number of them does not change in time. Now, we don't usually say the number of molecules in the gas phase. What we call it is the partial pressure of the gas. And that is what is constant at equilibrium. We would also call this the vapor pressure, the amount of pressure exerted by these molecules in the gas phase. Now, the equilibrium vapor pressure is higher for substances with weak intermolecular forces. Okay? So let's think about that for a second. So if intermolecular forces are weak, then that means it's easier for molecules to escape into the gas phase. Well, if there are more molecules in the gas phase, then the equilibrium vapor pressure is going to be higher. Now, volatile liquids, those are the kind of liquids that have weak intermolecular forces. Those evaporate quickly. So think of gasoline. There's an example. Non-volatile liquids have strong intermolecular attractions, and those are the ones that evaporate more slowly. All right, now another thought. Vapor pressure is related to temperature. So as we increase the temperature, then the vapor pressure increases. So think about why, why would that be? So if we increase the temperature, then the kinetic energy of the molecules in the liquid increases, and a larger proportion of them have enough energy to escape that liquid and enter the gas phase, to break those intermolecular attractions and enter the gas phase. Now, if we keep on increasing the temperature up to the boiling point, then there's going to be a point where those evaporating molecules, that va vapor pressure, is going to be equal to the external pressure pushing down. And that external pressure is atmospheric pressure. And atmospheric pressure is, of course, one atmosphere, and it pushes down on all of us, but we don't usually notice it. All right, well, we don't probably ever notice it. And so when that external pressure, one atmosphere, equals the vapor pressure for that liquid, one atmosphere, then the vapor pressure would be one atmosphere, then it's going to boil. Now, the boiling point, then, is defined as the temperature where the vapor pressure equals the external pressure, okay? And so again, usually it's just atmospheric pressure. And so our little summary down here, boiling point, vapor pressure equals the external pressure, which is usually one atmosphere. Now, here's a graph. We like to assemble 
this type of data into a plot because it makes it easy to see the trend. So here we have the vapor pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. And so as we increase the temperature, the vapor pressure is going to increase. Now this line is also called the boiling line, okay? Or it's also called the liquid vapor coexistence line. And so here we have vapor at higher temperatures and lower pressures and liquid here. Okay, so this is the boiling line. Now, let's say that this substance boils at T boil. Okay, now if we go up to this curve, this liquid vapor coexistence line, and then go straight over to the y axis, then that's going to give us the vapor pressure. Now, at the boiling point, we said that the external pressure is equal to the vapor pressure. So even though it doesn't say external pressure here, at this temperature, this vapor pressure is equal to that external pressure pushing down on it. Alright, so the next thing we are going to do is start assembling phase diagrams.